Let's talk about the problems with IGF-1 testing. Now, IGF-1 is the downstream surrogate biomarker of growth hormone production. So for a quick lesson, the hypothalamus makes growth hormone releasing hormone that tells the anterior pituitary make growth hormone. And therefore that has a downstream signal telling the liver to make IGF-1. And roughly about 70, 75-ish percent of total IGF-1 production comes from the liver. Now you'd think, okay, cool. So this would be a good surrogate marker to, to see at least what is 75% of my body's total IGF-1 production, right? That's what we would think. But measuring IGF-1 really isn't inherently that clinically significant. It really does not carry a lot of specificity in terms of who does not have adult growth hormone deficiency. And here's why. There's several problems with IGF-1 testing. Yes, it can be used to try to roll in, roll out who might have adult growth hormone deficiency, but we know that the diagnostic sensitivity of IGF-1 testing, as you get older, as you start approaching 35, 40-ish, it really starts to lose its sensitivity. Now, what the literature has shown us is that in puberty age, adolescent age, yeah, it, it is more sensitivity as to who does and who does not have low IGF-1, but as you get older, particularly 35, 40-ish, there appears to be an overlap between who has adult growth hormone deficiency and who doesn't have adult growth hormone deficiency. In other words, the sensitivity is lost as you get older. Another thing to think about is that there are clinical cases in which GH levels can be normal, but low IGF-1 may be present. Some people refer to this as quote unquote hepatic resistance. In other words, the brain is telling the liver to make IGF-1, but the liver is not making it in response to that GH release. Some of these conditions could be liver disease. Let's say MASH or MASH, which means metabolic associated steatohepatitis. Now that's formerly known as fatty liver disease or NAFLD, whatever you wanna to refer to it as. Other conditions that can lead to low IGF-1 in the presence of normal GH hypothyroidism. That one's somewhat common, to be honest with you. Yes, the thyroid hormones are involved in the production of IGF-1 from the liver. Low calorie diets, chronic dieting, malnutrition, anorexia, things like that. If you're in a chronically dieting type phase, that too can lead to a reduction, a downplay in the production of IGF-1 from the liver. Big one, obesity. We know that probably about 30% of the country right now is obese. Diabetes, insulin resistance, those are other big players in the Western countries that also inhibits IGF-1 release. Yeah, they'll still make it, but it does blunt how much they can make. Now we know sex hormones plays a role as well. Yes, so hypogonadism is another big player in the production of IGF-1. So in my opinion, the big levers you want to pull if you want to increase the production of IGF-1, if they got low T, address it. If they're insulin resistant, obese, they need to address that. If they have hypothyroidism, treat it accordingly. Another one that I didn't mention yet is that sleep apnea is another big player. And that's because growth hormone is robustly primarily made in pulsatile fashion during deep wave sleep. And if you have sleep apnea, you are disrupting that sleep pattern. You're not hitting those deep wave sleep that you're going to need to produce GH and thus IGF-1. And another cause would be what we refer to as iatrogenic, meaning medical intervention causes it. That would be the introduction of aromatase inhibitors. So as I just mentioned, hypogonadism can cause low IGF-1 in the context of normal GH. But if you get them on TRT, that should bring that production up. But then if you introduce aromatase inhibitors, you're kind of just negating that possible benefit because you're blocking estrogen. And we know that estradiol is a big lever that stimulates the production of IGF-1. And these are just a few reasons why drawing IGF-1 levels aren't exactly the most specific and sensitive towards who may and who may not have low growth hormone production.